Hey there, my awesome peeps. Last week, I stumbled upon this LinkedIn post from Holographic. They showcased this cool site called Virtual World. And you know what? I totally ignored it. But on the very next day, some super cool dudes from our pro group shook me awake and insisted I take a peek. Seriously, I am glad they did. Because let me tell you, when I finally laid eyes on it, it was like my mind exploded with confetti. This wicked cool block reveal animation blew my mind. And, the adventure doesn't end there. I also stumbled upon this mind-bogglingly cool hover effect. But we're gonna save that revelation for another video. For now, let's dive headfirst into the epicness and learn how to create this navigation reveal. Let's go. Let's start by adding a toggle button using the div with the ID of toggle and an ion icon to add that hamburger icon. Let's enhance the visual appeal of our page by adding a nav. Inside the nav, we'll have two divs, each containing two paragraph elements. To provide a clearer understanding of how the Z-index works in sync with overlays, let's incorporate a header. We'll use a div element with the class hero as the container, and inside it, we'll nest another div with the class header and h1 inside it. Let's also create a container to render our square blocks dynamically using JavaScript. Finally, we will add a menu, called as Content Overlay. Inside the menu, we'll have a header. Below the header, we'll include several navigation links with numbered spans and anchor elements. Now, let's add CSS to style our elements. To achieve a clean and full page display, we'll remove margins and paddings, and set the width and height to cover the entire viewport. Additionally, we'll apply the overflow hidden property to hide any potential scroll bars and maintain a seamless appearance. For the hero section, we'll set fixed position element covering the full viewport. By applying flexbox properties, we'll center the content horizontally and vertically. Setting a z-index of minus 2 ensures the hero section stays at the bottom. Additionally, we'll disable any pointer events on the hero section to prevent any interactivity. To style the H1, we'll set the font family to RM new, some font size, uppercase text, and a font weight. We'll align the text to the center, adjust letter spacing, and line height. To style the toggle button, we'll position it fixed at the top, horizontally centered, and vertically aligned. We'll have a rounded shape, a semi-transparent background, subtle border, and a blur effect. A box shadow will provide a soft shadow and the cursor will change to a pointer. A high Z index so the button will stay above other elements. To style the nav, we'll use position fixed, full width, flexbox layout with space between items, RM mono font, white color, blend mode difference, and a Z index of 1000. The nav items will be flex containers with margin, and the elements will have specific styles like font weight, uppercase text, font size, and padding. To style the square container, we'll use CSS properties such as width and height set to full viewport width and height, flexbox display with wrapping, flex start justification and alignment, order box sizing, hidden overflow, high Z index, and disabled pointer events. The squares will have a fixed size of 100px by 100px, kinda orange as background color, order box sizing, and disabled pointer events. These squares will be dynamically added using JavaScript. To create a content overlay we'll use CSS properties like position fixed, top zero, full viewport width and height, flexbox display with center alignment, a gap of 5 in between elements, a background color, text color, and a z-index of minus 1. For the content overlay heading, we'll set the color to same orange and the font size to 4BW. The link wrappers will have a flexbox display and use the RM mono font. The links will have specific styles such as padding, font size, font weight, color, and text transformation. First, we listen for the DOM content loaded event to ensure the code runs after the HTML has finished loading. Then, we select the menu overlay element and set its initial opacity to zero using GSET. Next, we grab the square container element and calculate the necessary dimensions for our squares based on the screen size. We update the square container's width and height to accommodate the calculated number of squares. Now, we create an array to store our square elements and define a function to generate the squares dynamically. Inside the create squares function, we use a loop to generate individual square elements, assign them the square class, append them to the square container, and add them to the squares array. Next, we define the animate squares function that uses GSEP to animate the opacity of the squares, and use stagger random to reveal and hide random squares from the array. Finally, 
we add an event listener to the toggle button. When clicked, it resets the square container and squares array, recreates the squares, and animates them using the animate squares function. We then use GSEP to toggle the visibility of the menu overlay and adjust its C index based on the overlay visible variable. And that's it. With this JavaScript code, you'll have a stylish menu overlay with animated squares. Feel free to customize it further to suit your needs.